One of my favorite genres of all time is action. Even the most simplest of duels can bring more entertainment than large armies clashing on the field. There is a science to frills and chills. At the end of the movie, we want to see our hero or villain draw blood. But sometimes things get diplomatic. And unless you're Atticus Finch, it's hard to make your dialogue sound dynamic. With moviegoers, the pen isn't always mightier than the sword. And talking should be the bookends to a fight or a chase scene. Unless it's coming from Mel Gibson, and I really do mean that. He's the only actor I've seen who can turn his acting into action. And there's three examples of that in his career. Spoiler warning. Gallipoli from 1981. The whole movie is about racing, metaphorically and literally. From athletic runner to runner of the military during the Gallipoli campaign, reporting vital messages to officers that ends up being crucial in saving lives. He has the job of reporting the failure of the attack and the possibility of further casualties if continued. In a short amount of time, he has to make the general realize the danger they're in, the frantic behavior with words between breaths. His body language matches the pace of the ticking clock above each soldier's head. The whole thing is more thrilling than the actual final assault. Another example of this was in 1987's Lethal Weapon. Gibson's performance of L.A. Cop Riggs has the job of bringing down a jumper. And of course, what we know of Riggs, they're on the same level. Not just in height, but their mental condition. It starts off with just two unstable men talking to each other. And in the blink of an eye, he turns into the troubled soul that he really is. In an instance, his face reflects all the emotional pain he's holding on to. It's like his expression is saying, I've been there and back, and I have no problem throwing it all away. It just doesn't sober up the jumper, but the audience as well. And in his last phase, he's actually happy enough to go along with it, as though he's found his suicide buddy, psychotic and comical at the same time. Nine years later, he would put his son's life on the line in 1996's Ransom. With the final negotiating call with the kidnapper, a corrupt cop who is now the most wanted man in the country, due to him changing the game, giving the kidnapper the choice. Because he knows whatever he does, he's not going to return his son alive. He makes himself appear more menacing than the kidnapper because he knows he's doing business with evil. With the rage in his voice, he's transforming from payer to bringer of vengeance, while still sounding like a loving father. Saying, whatever you do to my son, I can do way worse to you, while still being the voice of reason. It basically comes down to telling the kidnapper, enforcing the idea of whatever threats he makes, he can't win. And that is the method of turning acting into action.